Hey guys, it's Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com. I made a three hour, well, three and a half hour voyage up to Jacksonville, Florida today from Tampa. And uh, I was here five years ago to detail this car with another company's coating, which failed miserably at what the claims were, which is very common, which, you know, was part of the reason I went into developing my own coatings. Now, the bottom line is nothing lasts forever and there's no right answer is really where it's at. It's all personal preference when, you, when it comes to detailing products, whether it's professional grade or enthusiast grade, doesn't matter. Bottom line is you like what you like, you like, you know, there are certain trigger words that make you happy and then that's what you go for or your friends are doing it it's a big bandwagon type deal um you know just remember because your friends like it doesn't mean that it's the best um and what are we to say about what's the best what is the best what does the best mean here's what i know my force field pro professional coating does what i say it does and that is it resists against wash and do smarring it resists against all your environmental factors. Um, if your car gets hit by another car, you're probably gonna need to repair it and reapply the coating. That's the bottom line. I do know that it's extremely glossy, it's slick, it protects the car, it looks amazing, and it's very cost effective uh, compared to some of the other offerings that are out there. So, I'm about to start working on this. I think it's a 2012 or 13. I'm not sure. I'll get that answer. Uh, it's a Cadillac CTSV in a titanium color. I'm using one of my brand new products today. Uh, actually, matter of fact, I may link to the original video. I know I did a video. Uh, if you just search my YouTube channel for Cadillac CTSV, uh, he had the wheels powder coated matte black. Uh, I am using a brand new product today called Stripper Rinseless Wash. Uh, the benefit to that is I am not only decontaminating the surface, uh, removing some of the contaminants that are you know, bonded to the surface, but I'm also removing any waxes and polishing oils or anything else that might be on the vehicle. Uh, and I can also use that as a clay bar lubricant. So I can decon and decon. Uh, now I'm using this instead of my decon juice because I'm saving a step. I'm actually washing the car and decontaminating instead of using a specific product to remove the contaminants. So I'm washing the car and then I'm gonna go back over it and uh, clay bar the car with the same solution. So you notice the clay bar is actually in the bucket. That's my ultra fine grade Japanese clay bar. Those things work amazing and they don't scratch the paint, which is why I use them. Very, very aggressive without marring the paint. So uh, I'll get started. Uh, I will be removing some etchings in the hood you can see those a little bit here here and here also here and here we're not sure how that happened could be sap or whatever the car sits outside now so without further ado i'm going to go ahead and start knocking stuff out i got my harbor freight da's on deck and here we go all right so I showed you those etchings earlier. Let's see if I can get a focus. There we go. These etchings here, here. There's another one there, more there. So I've basically compounded the driver's side of the hood with infinite cut and the blue buff and shine cutting pad that I sell on detailjuice.com and it did a, an amazing job of removing those defects. You'll also note that the Infinite Cut left a fantastic finish. Um, it is not as good as it's going to be after some Infinite Finish. However, it does look fantastic. 
So I got rid of all the etchings on the driver's side. And as you see, the passenger ones are still there until I attack it now. All right, guys, I got some jerky in my face. Taking a little, well, I wouldn't call it a break, but. All right, so because I'm in the business to make money and not spend it on repairs because I'm an idiot and do stupid things like some people, these etchings, you can still see them here and here, as well as here, have been sanded with 2,000 grit, 2,500 grit, and then I finished them with 3,000 grit to make them easier to remove the sanding scratches. And when you're sanding, this is the 3,000 grit, you always wanna use a cross hatch pattern. And basically, I don't have any lube here, but it doesn't really matter. You wanna go up and down, and then you wanna go side to side. So cross hatch, up and down, side to side. It leaves a very uniform, even um, patch where the grooves and the scratches that are going vertically, when you turn this way, you're knocking those down. However, you are creating some that go this way. So cross hatch is the way to do it. Um, and all I can say, people ask me all the time, what are you, can you show me how to sand? Well, it's, it's really a gut feeling and, and you can only get that gut feeling, well, for it to work for you unless, a, a, instead of against you, it takes experience in the real world. And you guys know I talk a lot about these people on the internet and it's not because I'm angry at them. I mean, people are trying to do, they, they want to gather an audience to make money, whether it be on YouTube with subscribers or followers or Instagram or Facebook or whatever. The bottom line is they're, the internet, and the reason I stress this a lot is not because I'm upset at what they're doing. You know, they're, they're trying to better themselves. They, they're doing it the wrong way. But what I stress in the things and the videos that I shoot is that I have this real world experience. It's one thing to do something multiple times, time after time after time, and in different environments and in different situations uh, with different variables and get results. It's another thing to read a bunch of stuff on the internet and feel like you're a, a you know, you have a um, MBA from the University of YouTube. So that that's kind of my point. And when it comes to sanding, this is more aggressive than compounding, polishing, and all of that. So you've got to really take your time. And now this is a body line. It's not one I'm incredibly concerned about, but typically the, the closer you get to a body line and the more dramatic that body line is, the thinner the paint is at that, um, in that area. So this isn't a very dramatic line, not as dramatic as these are. So if, if this were closer to here, I wouldn't do as much. In fact, I'm done sanding. I do not feel like I can get more of that out without damaging anything, so I'm gonna stop. And, you know, that's my gut over 17 plus years of doing this uh, regularly. I'm at the point where I feel like I should stop. I feel like I am going to pass, I'm going to pass the point of, of beneficial return. So I'm at the point of, uh, you know, diminishing return now. So the more I invest in time and effort into this, the worse I'm, I feel I'm gonna make it look. So I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna compound those sanding scratches out, then I'm gonna go ahead and compound and polish the rest of the hood. Uh, Force Field Pro, the brand new unreleased 5 Plus, uh, is what I'm going to be putting on this uh, beautiful Cadillac CTSV. So I'm going to stop yapping and get back to work. Next time you see this hood, it will not have any sanding scratches. I hope you guys learned something about sanding. If you guys got any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, or if you guys want a specific video shot, I don't have a problem doing that.
All right, 2011 Cadillac CTSV. You can't see the spots anymore on the hood. They're not completely gone. As I stated earlier when I shot that segment. You can see a little bit, but you get to the point with your gut feeling where you just stop because you're at the point of diminishing return and that just means if you continue to go you're doing more harm than good and that's not the business that we're in so gloss is awesome I mean it really looks amazing I'll post a link to I believe I did the video on this car last time I was here so that's infinite cut infinite finish and then finished off the entire car with force field pro 5 plus as most of you guys know especially those of you who do use my products I always, when I apply Force Field Pro, I always install the sticker in the door jam. You can see it says installer name, that's me, and then the date, um, and then all the other information. It's out of the way, it looks right, it doesn't look out of place. I also damp shampooed this seat. If you'll notice, it looks very nice, free of oils. Got all the dirt and grime off the seat. Wipe the door jams, wipe, wipe down the interior. Nothing fancy in there. It didn't need a lot. But anyway, she looks awesome. Uh, that is the Signature Series Tough Tire Gel on the tires. Those look awesome too. And then Force Wheel Pro went on all the windows, the, the trim, the paint, the wheels, everything. So, if you guys got any questions for me, my cell phone number is 813-846-4406. And uh, check out Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation. It's a group on Facebook where we talk about only my products, my processes, and what I've got going on. If you want to be a uh, part of something bigger than detailing, check out that group. Send us a request. We'll get you in there and learn about my products. Uh, if you got questions for me, like I said, just contact me directly. Uh, but this, again, was a 2011 Cadillac CTSV. She's a beaut. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a wonderful day.